If you're watching this video, you've probably read something, for example in ASUS marketing materials for the Crosshair 6, about T topology. Or maybe you've heard an overclocker going on about one DIM per channel and how dreadfully important it is if you want to overclock your memory. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try and explain reasonably quickly what these mean and sort of what effect they have. So this is your standard memory layout. I'm using one line to represent the bus for each channel. Of course the actual bus is I think 64 bits. Hopefully it's 64 bits because otherwise I'm going to look silly. So this is your standard layout. Um, each trace is going to a pair of dim slots. Um, the optimal dim slots would be 2 and 4 with this layout and I'm terrible at drawing straight lines. There is an alternative layout that's sort of similar to this. Now this was popular back in the AM3 era. And what this did was it made it so that you used two dim slots that were next to each other for dual channel. And the benefit of this is that each uh, channel, each pair of dim slots, is quite similar. Um, so it's a bit easier for the processor to um, calibrate the memory controller for them. The disadvantage is that the wiring is more complicated and actually some boards with this you end up with a really silly situation where it's the middle two slots that are optimal. Um, just depending on how exactly the traces have been laid out. Now where it gets a little bit special is with Asus. So Asus for their T topology. Now, okay, this is most Asus boards don't use this, but some Asus boards have a T topology. It's something that they market themselves on, and this goes out of its way to ensure that each memory slot is exactly the same distance electrically from the memory controller. You've got exactly the same trace length. Um, and then finally you have one DIM per channel, which is pretty simple. Now, as far as the advantages of different things. So, this alternative layout, um, with all of this weird stuff going on, it's not a bad layout. Um, and certainly the boards that I've used that have it, they work well. The problem is that all of this is a pain in the ass to lay out, so nobody uses it. Um, now, comparing the standard layout and the T-topology. Um, T-topology is really optimal for if you have all four DIM slots populated. Now, if you know something about memory overclocking on Ryzen, uh, you might remember that if you have all four DIM slots populated, your memory controller is not very happy and your memory clocks aren't going to be as good. So Asus choosing this layout for their top-end overclocking board was, in retrospect, probably a mistake. And on the Crosshair 7, they actually went back to the standard layout, which is better if you only have one DIM per channel. The reason it's better is the length to the slots that are furthest away, so that would be uh, these two for each channel, that's the same, regardless of which one you have. Um, but then you have this little antenna hanging off. That's no good at all. Um, what that does is it picks up interference and it also it adds capacitance to the memory trace. So any bit of metal is going to act a little bit like a battery insofar as you can add or subtract electrons to or from it. Um, when you're trying to get data across a memory trace, you effectively either have to pump electrons into that trace to charge it up or drain electrons out of that trace. The more metal you have hanging off the trace, the more difficult it is to do that. That's separate to the fact that you also have propagation delay, which is just about the distance. So having extra metal hanging off 
um, in order to have fancy electrically equidistant stuff is not actually good. Um, the benefit of it, on the other hand, is that if you do have all four DIMM slots in use, then the uh, memory controller can be very precisely calibrated and it will work as well for all of the sticks. Now, with one DIMM per channel, you don't have to worry about any of that. It's nice and simple. Um, your slot goes from point A, slot, your memory trace goes from point A to point B. There's no other rubbish going on and this is fantastic. Um, the only problem is that you can only use one DIMM per channel. Um, but you end up with a minimal length, you end up with no extra metal hanging off that you don't need. And on this board I think they actually have a kind of fancy thing going on with the memory slots as well where it's surface mount. So that's even less metal hanging off. Um, and that gets you the best signal. It means that the signal reaches a level where you can read valid data faster. And that means that you can push your memory clocks higher. 